Hey guys, hey, it's Brady Light Sam here with Hague Productions. So today we're at the um, Crystal Cathedral. Yeah, that place. So let's or go. Formerly, formerly the Crystal Cathedral because the Catholic Church bought about. But this is where Robert Schuller did his preaching. And apparently 165 countries. And thank you so much for it 40 It was televised subs. every Sunday, the hour of power. Thank you so much for 40 subs. And thank you so much for 40 subs. That's what I said. Oh. Cause I want your light shining. By let's, the way. Let's go for 500. No. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Right. Do right. you see this? You see this? You see this? Yes. We're not actually in yet. We're not. It's. I don't even look, think. I think look. it's still under construction. Yeah. Last we checked, it was still. They were still but working we, on we it. But we were just doing this to make us look cool. Yeah. And we're gonna walk the yeah. grounds, and. Uh, yeah. And also, Robert Schuller is buried here, so we're gonna check out that as well. Hey, this gross. It's not gross. Yes, it is. I don't want to see someone's. Gluck it's just bun. someone's. Oh my gosh. Anyway, Bye, we're gonna be. Walk in the grounds at the and, former Crystal Cathedral and, and, and. in Garden Grove, no, California. No, no. Orange County. And we're also doing a voiceover. Yes, I'll probably do that. It's windy. Know and I know some things, but not everything, so I'm safer yeah. doing the voiceover. Yeah. Enjoy. Bye, guys. Bye. Reverend Robert H. Schuler is a retired American pastor, motivational speaker, televangelist, and author whose career has spanned five decades. Reverend Schuler is also the founder of the Crystal Cathedral Ministries and the television show Hour of Power, watched in over 165 countries by millions of people. Starting from humble beginnings, Reverend Schuler rose to be one of the most watched televangelists in the world. Reverend Schuller's close relationships with renowned architects Richard Neutra, Philip Johnson, Richard Meyer, and Jin Wong led to a collection of unique buildings on the 34-acre Christ Cathedral Campus, formerly the Crystal Cathedral Campus. Reverend Schuller will long be remembered for his remarkable legacy. Robert Harold Schuller was born on September 16, 1926 in Alton, Iowa. His father was a poor farmer with a sixth grade education and his mother a hard-working farm wife. Reverend Schiller's Dutch immigrant grandparents stressed the value of hard work. The family attended the first Reformed Church. In his autobiography, My Journey from an Iowa Farm to a Cathedral of Dreams, Reverend Schuller writes that he was born at the dead end of a dirt road with no name and no number. The farm had no electricity or plumbing, but from the age of four, Schuler knew that he wanted to be a minister. Schuler met and married musically talented Arvella Dehane and pastored the Ivanhoe Reformed Church in Chicago for five years. The church had only 38 members when they arrived, so to build the congregation, Schuler went door to door in the neighborhood. Attendance increased, but people didn't return for his weighty, theologically argumentative sermons. Because he had won a prize for this type of sermon from professors in college, he was puzzled. Arvella said, who are you trying to impress? Your professors aren't the ones who need your message. Schuler then received a copy of Norman Vincent Peale's book, The Power of Positive Thinking. While Schuler had previously thought Peale's sermons too simple and emotional, the book changed his way of preaching. As Schuler reflected upon what he considered the positive, simple, storytelling style of Jesus and delved into his school day entertainer side, his sermons changed to simple, emotionally positive and encouraging messages. These messages resonated with his congregation, which grew from the original 38 members to nearly 500 in five years. During this time, and because of Schuller's expanding congregation, a new sanctuary was designed by Chicago architect Benjamin Franklin Olson. Olson was the first who encouraged Schuler to pursue architectural excellence, telling him that he should never let financial considerations force him to compromise on the fine details of design when building a church. Art, not money, must have the last word, said Olson. After five years in Chicago, Schuler was given orders to head to California and form a new church. In 1955, the Schulers drove to Orange County, California with their two children, Sheila and Robert Anthony. $500 in assets and their worldly goods towed behind their car in a small trailer. 
Orange County had a population of 500,000 in 1955. Disneyland would open soon, and tract housing began to replace the orange groves in Dairyland. Yet Schuler was doubtful about finding enough people to create a Dutch Reformed congregation. There were millions of Presbyterians in the United States, but only 200,000 Dutch Reformed. Schuler wrote in My Journey, I'll be lucky if I can find six people from my denomination living here. Then I had my revelation, which would be a revolution in the new church development. Bob, this town doesn't need a reformed church. What it needs is a positive thinking mission that will meet the needs of the people here who don't go to church. After their arrival, the Schulers set about finding a building suitable for a church service. However, they were unable to find a hall or building to rent in Orange County. But they did discover the Orange Drive-In Theater. No one had ever held a church service in such a place, but Schuler realized drive-in movie theaters were only used at night. Schuler rented the drive-in for Sunday during the day. His unique call to the congregation was, come as you are in a family car. Standing atop the roof of its snack bar, Schuler conducted his first open-air sermon to 100 people all in their cars. Schuler believed this drive-in ministry, its ties to the outdoors, and his experience preaching outside atop the concession stand helped inspire him to later build the all-glass Crystal Cathedral. He often stated, it was there that I fell in love with the sky. An early advertisement from the Orange County Register announced the new ministry's appeal. The Orange Church meets in the Orange Drive-In Theater, where even the handicapped, hard of hearing, aged and infirm can see and hear the entire service without leaving their family car. Schuler's wife Arbella provided music for each service from an electronic organ. The organ was portable and mounted on a trailer that the Schulers towed to and from their home to the service. Worshippers at the drive-in listened to the Schulers via portable speaker boxes mounted to their vehicles. Church guidebooks for services include instructions not only about when to sing, speak, and stay silent, but also for the mounting the speakers onto car windows. As one congregate recalled about the experience, smoke and be in church at the same time at a drive-in during the daytime? What a trip! Another said, I came out to Cal Southern California in 1965 from the great city of Cleveland. When we came here, we settled in the city of Orange, and we thought this was really peculiar. Who goes to church outside? In 1968, in addition to purchasing an additional 10 acres on the north side of the property, Schuler worked with Nutra and Nutra's son, Dion, to design a building to hold his congregation's expanding ministries. The 13-story Tower of Hope was built and with its 90-foot-tall neon cross was the tallest building in Orange County for more than a decade. The tower was named after the New Hope Suicide Prevention Crisis Line. The first church sponsored 24-hour suicide prevention telephone hotline started by Arbella Schuler. Schuler's expanding ministries focused on helping those in need, including children, students, singles, older people, Hispanics, people in grief, and people struggling with addictions. They also participated in community partnerships that provided food, clothes, and other assistance to the needy. The ministries worked with the Orange County Rescue Mission, the House of Hope for Abused Women, the Downtown LA Mission, and many others. Volunteers collected and distributed thousands and thousands of cans of food and items of clothing to those in need. On October 18, 2010, Coleman announced that the Crystal Cathedral was seeking bankruptcy protection in the midst of what became known as the Great Recession. In late August of 2013, Schuler was diagnosed with esophageal cancer that had spread to the lymph nodes. A follow-up examination in September 2013 presented Schuler with the possibility of undergoing chemotherapy and radiation therapy that could extend his life. Arbella Schuler died on February 11, 2014 at the age of 84. The Schulers had been married for 63 years. Schuler died early on the morning of April 2, 2015 at a nursing facility in Artesia, California at the age of 88. His funeral was held at Christ Cathedral, which was the former campus of the Crystal Cathedral. He was next to his wife at the Christ Cathedral Memorial Garden Cemetery in Garden Grove, California. Schuler was survived by five children, 19 grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, and an older brother, Henry. Schuler's influence as an inspirational religious leader is decades long and his Christ-centered teachings have worldwide reach. As a pastor, speaker, motivator, and author, he is appreciated by countless millions worldwide for his ability to encourage and inspire. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this.
Well, hope you enjoyed our vlog. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that fun stuff.